This brings us finally to the last part of uh, uh, the methods of manipulation. And the last one is the biggest of them all, chaos sorcery. What has been known as the Hegelian dialectic or problem, reaction, solution. And we're going to talk about what the Hegelian dialectic is and we're going to see an example of how this is put into action when we analyze the 9-11 occult ritual. The Hegelian dialectic is what chaos sorcery really is. And this is um, uh, uh, a, an ideology that was uh, formulated by George Hegel, a uh, German philosopher. The Hegelian dialectic is a framework for guiding our thoughts and actions into conflicts that lead to a predetermined solution. So the solution is already predetermined before anything happens. The people who are putting this into effect want a certain outcome. This is outcome-based framework. An outcome-based framework. It's saying this must occur. This is the end result that we want and anything else is undesirable and we will not settle for it. It's going to happen this way. We just have to convince people that it has to end up happening this way. So what you do is you, if you guide thought and action into decision making that ends up how you wanted it to begin with. This is accomplished by manipulating consciousness into circular pattern, a circular pattern of thought and action. So again, it's a manipulation of consciousness. It's ultimately about mind control. The synthetic solution to these conflicts cannot be introduced unless those being manipulated take a side that will advance the predetermined agenda. The agenda is already predetermined. We just need to create a synthetic conflict to, um, uh, to make this come into manifestation the way we have it originally planned and designed. So, this is Hegel's dialectic and it is not so much that Hegel is an evil person in his own right. This is another perversion. How chaos sorcery is used as an example of the Hegelian dialectic is it's a modified version of this dialectic for a dark purpose, for manipulation. Uh, the researcher David Icke has called this problem, reaction, solution. And it's a great term for it because it describes it perfectly. You create the problem to get a reaction and then you offer the solution. The solution was already predetermined. But I like to call it chaos, confusion, opportunity because I think it more accurately describes what the process that's taking place is really about. You want to create chaos. You need a chaotic situation created because the reaction that you're looking for is confusion, not knowing what to do or how to act appropriately to the situation. Once confusion enters the, the, the mix, you have fear-based consciousness. So, the person is willing to accept all kinds of limitations and control to go back to order. And therefore, that's your opportunity to bring in your predetermined solution and get them to go along with what you originally wanted. David Rockefeller described the Hegelian dialectic perfectly. He said, we are on the verge of global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. And it's not the light one that he's talking about. This was the major crisis that they introduced. The events of 9-11-2001 was an example of the modified Hegelian dialectic. It was an exa example of chaos sorcery. It was an occultic ritual of human sacrifice that involved three major uh, examples of occultic symbology and ideology in, in the work to create the synthesis that they were looking for. And those three occult um, schools or occult um, uh, ideologies that were employed on that day, the symbolism of which was employed on that day was Kabbalah, Tarot and Freemasonry. 
Now, before we get into any confusion at all, I want to state emphatically that I do not believe that any of these systems are evil in and of themselves. It is how occult sciences are used, occult knowledge is used by the practitioner to what end that determines whether they're wielded for good or evil. So it is not these practices or these systems that are of knowledge that are evil in any way. They are simply knowledge and it is how they are used. Let's get that straight right off the bat. So, these three systems of occult knowledge all encode within them the understanding of human psychological makeup and human consciousness. And the ritual of 9-11 is ultimately about the destruction of that knowledge and keeping the truth down, keeping our awareness down destroying our awareness, destroying consciousness. So we're going to look at some examples of this occultic iconography and symbolism that was used on that day. The most glaring example of which is in tarot. This is the tarot image known as the tower. It's a card that represents the end of an old way of things and the birth of a new way of things. It's the destruction of something that is old and worn down and the building of something new in its place. One thing is being cleared to make way for something to be put up in its place. Okay, So that's the tower. It is depicted as being struck by a bolt of lightning on fire with people toppling out of the windows. And that is exactly what we saw on the day of 9-11-2001. We saw towers that were struck by forces. They were on fire and people were leaping from the windows. So clearly the um, occultic symbology of this particular tarot card is was employed on that day. Whether this be totally by design or it be synchronicity, I'll leave that up to the, uh, the, per, uh, the, the, the uh, audience to decide. Um, but one of the main things we have to understand to understand how this ritual went into uh, effect is that two buildings did not uh, collapse in New York City. Three buildings came down on that day in New York City alone. Many people still do not know this or understand it amazingly because the main, mainstream media only showed the collapse of this building here uh, to the right only one time and never really showed it again unless you go on the internet and search for the video of the collapse of World Trade Center number 7. Uh, some people are still unaware that a third building came down at 5.20 p.m. on that day. So we have to understand first that not only the Twin Towers uh, collapsed into their own footprint, but so did Building 7, a 47-story steel, uh, concrete and steel reinforced building collapsed uh, into its own footprint in approximately six and a half seconds at 5.20 p.m. on 9-11-2001 when no plane had struck it. So. I'm not here to argue the physics of 9-11. I'm not here to even talk about any of the aspects of the how part of 9-11, the, the physics or the how it happened. I'm much more interested in using my time to discuss the why and the implications of the occultic symbology employed in what I consider a dark occult ritual, a ritual that embodied the modified Hegelian dialectic. And so the first thing to understand is three towers came down, three pillars, if you will, came down on 9-11, not two. The first uh, occult system that I'm going to look at in relation to 9-11 is Kabbalah. Kabbalah is uh, an ancient Semitic form of occultism. Uh, Judaism takes some of its roots from Kabbalah. And uh, this is the main symbolic um, structure or this main symbolic icon of Kabbalism. It is known as 
the Sephirotic Tree of Life. This is known as the ladder to God. Okay? The, the levels that go up in consciousness to God. And uh, there are ten of these spheres on the tree. If you count them, there are ten total. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're known as, these spheres are known as sephirot. So the ten sephirot are comprised the tree of life. Now in the books that describe this symbol, the sephirotic tree, uh, they're, they're the, the Zohar and the Sefer Yetzirah. They uh, look at it as that there are only ten sephirot. There are not nine and there are not eleven. This is specifically worded into these books. To speak of there as being any more or less sephirot is considered like a blasphemy in Kabbalah because there are only ten. So this is where part of the name the, the name of the ritual comes from. Not nine, not eleven, but yet we have the ritual happens on nine elevens. And we'll talk about the occult significances of the numerology as well when we explore that. But uh, in Kabbalah, nine and eleven are considered blasphemies against the ten sephirot, if you speak of there as being any less than ten or any more than ten. And we also see that the symbolic numbers, the numbers of these buildings are symbolic when we relate the ritual to Kabbalah, because the buildings that came down were the, 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 the uh, Tower 1, which is the male tower, okay? it has a phallic symbol on top. This is tower one in the, in the numbering system of the World Trade Center. The, the feminine tower is tower number two. And then this building is World Trade Center seven. So if we add them together, we get one plus two plus seven, and that equals 10. So we see there are 10 sephirot, the building numbers total 10. So they're bringing down the 10 in the buildings and they're bringing down symbolically the 10 sephirot. You see, in the sephirot, there are three pillars, three columns. You have this left-hand path known as the path of severity. You have the right-hand path that is known as the path of mercy. Again, these are corollaries to the Freemasonic pillars. This would be the pillar of mercy, which is Jaquin. This is the pillar of severity, or Boaz. And then you have the path of mildness, or the path of will. Will to ascend in consciousness. This sphere representing base consciousness, and this sphere representing cosmic consciousness. Without going into very deep explanations of, of uh, what each sephirot represents, 